There have been a lot of people taking a lot of drugs for a long period of time. 20 years ago, they were taking drugs. 30 years ago, they were taking drugs. And then now we come up with an ablation. And the question would be asked, why in the world are you doing that? And the answer is, either the drugs don't work or the drugs have too many side effects. I think those are the two big deals. One thing you have to say is that in some patients, drugs work fine. And so with Cabana, we weren't trying to completely destroy drug therapy. It's just that side effects, complications, inefficacy. When we started Cabana, and we actually did this back in 2005, as we wanted to know whether ablation was better than drug therapy, state-of-the-art drug therapy, in reducing total mortality, in reducing mortality and severe disabling strokes, severe bleeding and cardiac arrest. And so that's where we started. And we enrolled our first patient in 2009 and we took off from there and now we're through with the trial. In Cabana, we had a couple of different kinds of outcomes. First, we looked at the composite first. And if you look at the composite by intention to treat, there was no difference between ablation and drug therapy. If you look at total mortality, there was no difference. Now that's by intention to treat. Now there was a little bit of a problem with that because there were 300 patients that crossed over from drug therapy to ablative therapy. And there were 100 patients that didn't get ablated at all. And there were different reasons for that, but that's not all that unusual for those kinds of trials. But at the end of the day, those two issues were indeterminate. Now, we also looked at per protocol analysis and we looked at on treatment analysis. On treatment, the rationale was, well, if you don't get the ablation or if you don't take the drug, then you don't get the benefit or the risk of either. And in the per protocol, we went ahead and we looked because what per protocol does is you still randomize patients. They still are followed in their arm of randomization. If they cross over or would cross over, then they are censored from the trial. So a very important thing to understand is there still was randomization in those groups. And in those groups by on treatment and by per protocol, there was a significant difference in ablation patients did better. Now, in the subgroup studies that we presented here, we've looked at heart failure. Heart failure patients showed a substantial improvement in outcome with ablation rather than drug therapy, both by the composite and the more simplistic mortality. And the recurrence rates were much, much lower. That was my intention to treat even in the first portion of the trial and certainly in patients who have had heart failure. The burden of atrial fibrillation was less in patients who had the kinds of problems that you get with recurrent atrial fibrillation. Burden of atrial fibrillation was less with ablation than it was in patients who had been treated with drug therapy. Quality of life was better. So patients who were treated with ablation had a better quality of life outcomes using a variety of different statistical analyses than did patients who were treated with drug therapy. We've now looked at gender, at minorities, at age, and at the type of atrial fibrillation. And the findings are all the same. Now I have to say that Cabana is not a perfect trial. So by intention to treat, the first two endpoints didn't make it. They were the same. But in looking at subgroup analyses and in looking at on treatment and per protocol, then there's quite a big difference. And now even by intention to treat with improvement in symptoms, improvement in quality of life and improvement in all these other issues, Cabana did fine. Anytime you do a study that has 2,200 patients in it, there are gonna be some limitations. 
So the first limitation is we had 300 crossover from drug to ablation. We had 100 patients who should have been ablated that didn't get ablated at all. Those are clear limitations. It makes it a little bit harder when you're doing the statistical analysis. It forces you to look at a variety of more issues. We had to say that in the beginning that it was incomplete. We couldn't say anything more than it was a neutral trial for those two endpoints. Everything else, including intention to treat analyses, are just fine. So the first impact that we saw with Cabana is the number of bloggers that were out there blogging who had no idea whatsoever what the trial said. They were sending out their blogs before we even had the data out. Blogging's not peer reviewed. So the bloggers were not only giving false information, it was their own opinion. That's okay. It's okay if they have their own opinion. I welcome that. This is America. You do things like that. But the problem with it really was more of, a, of an issue where they got it wrong. And not only did they get it wrong, but it wasn't peer reviewed. So they were just making statements off the top of their heads based on 30 years of data 30 years ago, not realizing that recent studies have demonstrated that even with intention to treat, you can have problems in precision that pushes your answer to the null. And I think that that happened. Twits tweet. We had a fair amount of that. People who had no idea what the data were, but were tweeting uh, at the very beginning. So at the beginning, that was a problem. When we finally got all of the data out, there have been three papers published, and there are about 10 more that are going to be published. Most of that has settled down. We still have disagreements. That's OK. A good trial causes disagreements. But at the end of the day, Cabana is healthy. It's fine. We've got a lot of data out there, and we think we're going to have a lot more data coming. We have three papers out, and we have the age, gender, minority, arrhythmia type, heart failure that are coming out. And we have 140 other papers that we would like to do. But you know what? I'm going to be too tired. And so what we'll probably do is have about 50 or 60 papers altogether. So we'll be looking at all of the questions that have been raised by people who have been honest and have looked at the data and have had questions. We'll get that taken care of and we'll put that out so people can read it and, and understand it to a better degree.